Okay. So I'm going to intro this uh, treetop level statement while Chris flies his first okay. normal approach to get warmed up for the day. So we just had a member, or I'm not sure if he's a ground school member or not, but been around our YouTube videos for a long time. Always commenting, and we appreciate all of his comments. His statement was something effective. You guys are using the terminology treetop level Traffic during south, turning west base two seven Goshen. During the auto rotation. There just traffic that's an eight two three Charlie Sierra is turning base for runway three six Sturgis. I what I want to say is it's the terminology I used early on. I think I got it from my instructors. Where we fly in Indiana, it works. For the height of our trees, I know his comment said it doesn't navigate pop out with final two seven helicopters in sight, Goshen. It doesn't work for us with trees that are hundred and thirty feet tall. That's a great comment, and I appreciate the feedback. Point is, it works for us, right? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you kind of get through your takeoff here. Well, I'm seven five six four nine four miles west. Joining that was kind of a crappy approach because airplane. Here's a little tidbit for airplane pilots: helicopters move slower. We get slower as we do our approach. We come into a hover. I have an airplane coming right up. He's not giving me any any room here, so I'm just going to get going here so I don't make him have to do a go-around or anything. Right. Heaven forbid if he would have extended his downwind or something like that for me to have time to make the approach. <laughs> Sorry. Coming from an airplane pilot. I am an airplane pilot, so I am allowed to, to say stuff like that. Goshen traffic, copter 3, Sheriff tells on the go 27, right traffic, Goshen. Um, yeah, sorry about that, but you know, you know, if you're flying at an airplane, heavy airplane school, airport, they don't pay attention to us. They don't, I mean, heaven forbid, like I said, all he had to do is extend his downwind a little bit to give me a little time to make my approach, but he obviously did not want to do that. He was turning final before I was even on my, on my short final. So, I'll just get out of the way for him. Okay, sorry. So, let's go back to our... And that's okay, because you know what, that's like... We have a video in the free radio course about um, about this topic, how going into a lot of times to a towered airport where if they work with helicopters all the time and they're very familiar with them, you don't usually have any trouble. But sometimes you'll go to an airport where they just don't have a lot of helicopters. Right. It's a, it's very infrequent that they come in. So sometimes they'll give you a they'll give you some direction that they think works. Right. When it, right. for us in a helicopter, it doesn't work. And it's just by nature of they're just not used to aircraft helicopters and, coming and going. And you know, most time I can you know helicopters going direct to the spot that you want to land at. So usually I would have been going direct to the ramp, or I could have sidestepped and used the taxiway, but there was already an airplane taxiing down the airplane, and I could have sidestepped to the side, um, just north of the runway. But it's all snow out there, so we would have got into a whiteout condition for sure. Right. Um, you know, sometimes I want the runway. It's a you know I have the right to the runway just like the airplane guy does. Sure. So, you know, it's just, I don't know, pilot courtesy, I guess. All right, so yep. back to our... <laughs> That's okay. You know, it's, it's a little bit of our reality of what yes. happens, what goes on, and, you know, do we always want to be prim and proper in every single video and never really let people know what really goes on. No. Sometimes you get aggravated, right? We've had a couple today. We had the CO, we had that guy. It's a good learning video. It's, it is. Good you you got to always be ready to adapt. Do what's right, do what's safest, and sometimes... And that's part of, you know, actually that's a good, I mean, we just, I just mentioned this to Seth, who we saw earlier. You know, it's good situational awareness. Yes, yeah. you're learning what's going on in here, you're learning how to fly the helicopter, you might be learning instruments, but you also got to know what's going on around you, Yep. you know, so... Like the other day in the video when I forgot my train of thought and you forget you forgot what maneuver you were doing. Right. All in the same shot because <laughs> and, and I defend you in the video and say, Well, you're flying the helicopter, you're looking outside, you're paying attention to what you're doing, you're listening to what I'm saying, and trying to figure out your next move. Yep. There's a lot going on. There is a lot going on. Okay, so now we'll get back to okay, the Okay, so now we'll get back. So you stated about a member who talked about they they didn't like the term treetop level for the flare because of their trees aren't that high or they're too short or they didn't have trees or something to that. Yeah, effect. trees were a lot higher. And he's probably, I think he was, if I remember right, he's in California. Okay. So, you know, the height, I could understand that he where he's at, the trees might be much taller than what we have here in Indiana. So 
So the thing that comes to my mind is one POH says flare at 50 feet, one POH says flare at 100 feet, one POH may say flare at 75 feet. Number one, you got to go with the aircraft you're flying, what's the POH say? Correct. But then also, how can you know, can you differentiate 60 between 50? Well, that is my thing if you want my two cents here. Go ahead, um, jump right in. Obviously, we all know, or everybody knows, that you were my primary instructor. So, you know, you instructors learn from other instructors. So, yep. you know, you taught me treetop level. So that's how I continue to uh, teach my students. And I'll tell you why I like treetop level is because, well, the POH for the G2 says flare at 60 feet. Okay? Good example. Okay? If you're a brand new student learning to the learning how to do an auto rotation, I want them outside. I want your eyes outside. If you tell them flare at 60 feet, what are they going to do? They're going to be their head's going to go right out. down. Their head's going to go right down to the altimeter gauge, and they're going to stare at it until it says 60 feet. And then by that time, we already just plummeted right into the ground. Right. So I use treetop level because it's a visual reference outside outside the helicopter. And usually there's trees around the airport most of the time. Yep. So you can look. I mean, like Goshen's a good example. I can look right down to seven, and I can see a tree line all the way at the very end. So I'm just looking outside. When I see that, when I get level with the treetop, I start my flare. Now, one thing that I teach, which I think someone mentioned this earlier, um, which you taught me, is I start off with a mini flare. Okay, so treetop level, I'm not telling you to yank back on that cyclic and really get that nose up. Exactly. I'm telling you at treetop level, start a mini flare to start decreasing that speed. And then I teach that that flare gets more aggressive. So really, when you really, and the way I teach it, if you, once you really get into that aggressive flare, you're at your 60 feet or your 50 feet or whatever that is. And guess what? If your flare a little too high, I teach, hold off. Let the aircraft, as you start to push forward, let the aircraft start to settle a little bit, then come up on your collective. So my thing is the treetop level to help, to so this guy, this your uh, HOGS member understands, I like the treetop level because it keeps the students' eyes outside, okay? We're already doing a scan. We're doing our RATS, our ATS, our rotor speed, airspeed, trim, spot, okay? It keeps them outside. That's part of your scan. When you get down there at the very end, when everything's starting to happen real fast, I don't want them inside. I don't want their eyes inside. I want them looking outside, getting ready for that, uh, that flare or, or pulling that collective or, or whatever we got it going on. It's hard to visualize, you know, we're 820 here at Goshen. Add 60 feet to that, now you're at 880. Hey, real quick, point to 880 on that on that altimeter, please. Exactly. So, you know, I could round it up and say 900. You can spot the nine real easy, but again, your eyes are back to the altimeter, and I don't like that. I want my I want my students' eyes outside. That's Gee, why you don't want them level. checking rotor and airspeed and RPM and trim and then add an altitude on top of that? Are you kidding me? <laughs> but no, I'm teasing. It's a good yeah. point because, yeah, you're going to add trying to figure out who can who is that good that right. you can look down and go, 57 feet, I'm flaring. Right, right. I mean, and I'm going to be transparent and say, you can, tell, you can tell me I'm bragging. But R22, R44, Bell 47, Enstrom, BK117, EZ135, Jet Ranger, I don't care. Across the board, everything I've ever flown, I use treetop level. Yeah. No matter what the pH says, because like you said, well, I like what you said, you starting the flare treetop level. And we know we should start with a small pull, um, just a small pull in that cyclic. So depending on the day and the way and every other thing that affects your auto rotation, you've got time to change that flare, like Chris said, Start small, make it bigger, make it bigger. Yep. And depending on your situation, you can make that pull gradual or you could make it more aggressive. Right. So you, using treetop level, you can still adjust as needed going in to the amount of flare that you need to make the auto rotation successful. And if you got other terminology that works better, that's great. Yeah, and, and again, it goes back to what your instructor teaches you, what the, you know, what, what the POH says, whatever. Yes, I understand that the book says 60 feet, but again, point out 60 feet when when you're a brand new student trying to do an auto, show me how you're gonna know what 60 feet is. Easy, pre-top level, start your flare. Flare gets more aggressive as we settle. Before I move to the airport I'm at now, 
I was at the previous airport for 10 years. I trained out of there for 10 years. One paved runway down between two rows of trees. Yeah. So it, it was perfect for our intensive purposes. I was already used in that terminology prior to flying out of that airport. And the whole 10 years I was there, it just, you know, yeah. I'm not going to change what I say now. Yeah, me either. I like it. Like I said, I... Yeah. I like treetop level. I think that's I think that's all that's all we got. I think we killed it. I did. Put down in the comments below if you got some other verbiage that you use that works for your situation because we'd like to hear it. Yep. I mean, there's probably some cool things people use for and versus to treetop level. But it's a good video. So hey, subscribe and come back tomorrow for we're gonna go ahead and hit counter versus clock counterclockwise again. It'll be pretty short, but that's tomorrow. And then we're gonna get back to the audio videos. Okay. Like, subscribe, see you in the next video. See how our little our little topic <laughs> where it goes. Right. But it's good. I think we beat that good because I want people to understand why I do it. You know, I mean if we if have they a don't good rebuttal for that. Well, the thing of it is is as you learn, as you know as an instructor, if if your students don't understand why they're doing it, a lot of times they're not gonna learn. If yes. you just tell them, you know, like now